So I am Dr. B. Pradeep Kumar from uh, Government College Ambalapura from the Department of Economics. And today I want to uh, discuss a Bosserov's theory of agriculture development, uh, which is a part of the syllabus of agriculture economics for final year uh, BA students in Kerala University. And uh, in the second module of the syllabus of agriculture economics, uh, there are four important theories. One is Louis' model of uh, agriculture supplies of labor, and second, Bosrup's theory, and third, Merle's theory, and the fourth, Kobob theory. And today we take up for discussion the Bosrup's theory of agriculture transformation. Let's see what is this Bosrup's theory. So, Bosrup uh, is a Danish economist, and uh, she uh, wrote an article titled The Conditions of Agriculture Growth, the Economics of Agrarian Exchange Under Population Pressure, which was published in 1965. In this article, she tried to explain the relationship between human population growth rate and food production. So, it simply uh, details out how the food production and agriculture transformation are influenced by the population growth rate. And Bostrov's main argument is that as the need of uh, food increases, so definitely as population increases, the need of food also rises and because there will be more mouths to be fed and therefore more areas will be brought under cultivation under, uh, under that circumstances. And um, there, this uh, is described as agricultural intensification, means uh, as population increases more agricultural lands are put under intensive, intensive, intensified cultivation or more areas will be cultivated. And Bosserov tries to probe into this uh, causes of agriculture development based on uh, the population pressure. And she maintains that agriculture development is due to some kind of compulsion because of the compulsion on the part of the people to have more and more food as population increases, naturally it forces the people to uh, bring more land under cultivation and they will adopt more technologies to increase the productivity of both land and the labor. And uh, uh, then the theory uh, has some sort of uh, differences uh, from the Malthusian theory. Uh, we know that Malthusian theory says that if population is less than food supply, population is less than population, then population will increase to wipe out the excess food supply. Uh, and if population is beyond the means of subsistence, that means if population is higher than the food supply, then the people will adopt certain positive checks so that the population is brought back to the level of foods, uh, food production. So in the Malthusian theory, it is the food supply which drives population growth rate. That means if population is less than the food supply, then population will be raised. If population is higher than the food supply, then the population will be brought down to the level of food supply. That means food supply is a main factor determining the population growth rate. But in the Bosserov's theory, it is the population which determines the uh, agriculture development. If population uh, is high and there is more pressure on agriculture sector and food, then uh, what naturally happens is that more uh, areas will be used to for cultivation. So, if there is population pressure, if uh, wherever there is population pressure, population does not go down. Rather, it leads to increases in agriculture growth rate, a uh, growth rate and increases in food supply. So, in the Bostrov theory, it is the uh, population growth rate which determines the agriculture development and increases in agriculture supply. Then Bosser explains uh, five stages of agriculture development. Let's see, the these are the five stages. One is forest fallow stage, and second is bush fallow stage, and the third is short fallow stage, and fourth annual cropping, and the fifth stage is multiple cropping. So, so it ex explains how the agriculture development is intensified as we pass uh, on each and each and every step. The agriculture sector will be will be intensified, more intensive, intensive cultivation will be there. Let us discuss the first stage, forest fallow stage. This is the initial stage of course, and this is called forest fallow stage. 
And here the agriculturists use very simple operations. They use very outmoded technology uh, and seeds, etc. So it is a very simple operations and it needs very small capital in the form of seed or access for filling the trees. It requires least amount of labor to produce agriculture in this stage. So forests are burned and the soil itself becomes loose due to the burning of the forest. This type of uh, land can be dug up with a simple stick. So therefore that means we use a part of the agriculture area and uh, after cultivating that agriculture area we, we will leave the place and, after, uh, and uh, uh, we will come back to that place after a long period of time because there is no population increase and population pressure on agriculture production. So we need a very limited amount of agriculture food. So what the people do is that they will first go to a forest place and they will first fell these trees um, in a particular area and they start cultivating on the particular uh, on that place and after cultivation they leave the uh, place uh, and they, they go in search of some other places. Uh, and, and meanwhile the, 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 this particular area where the uh, farmers cultivated will grow into a forest. But in the second stage, uh, the people are not allowing the, uh, the, the forest to be grown after cultivation because the population pressure increases, the need of food increases. So the people uh, means they cannot wait uh, for the forest to be grown after the cultivation is done. So what happens is that immediately they, uh, means after the cultivation of a particular area, they will start again cultivating that area. So they will allow the area to be grown to the uh, to the stage of a bush. So that is called the bush fallow stage. So according to Professor Boslavs, when population grows, the community will start, uh, will resort to the burning of the forest with less mature growth in bush stage. And when repeated burning of less matured forest takes place, we find ourselves to the bush fallow stage. In this stage, bushes rather than forest are burned. So the soil in the stage is very compact instead of becoming loose. So that means the, the intensity of the cultivation increases. We never leave the land uh, fallow for a long period of time. We just uh, uh, leave, the, uh, leave the land for a short period of time or we allow just the uh, bush to grow and not the plant to grow. So, so that after at that stage we will again come back to the particular place and we will fell the, or we will cut down the bush and start cultivating in that place. Next is short fallow stage. So even the uh, means of further growth, uh, growth of population and the need of, of food increases, then what happens is the society cannot afford to grow bushes even. So therefore, immediately after cultivation they start plowing the area again and cultivate. So the, the area will be left fallow for a very, very short period of time. Neither the plant is allowed to grow or the bush is allowed to grow because the need of food increases as population increases. So there is much pressure on the population to cultivate the land again and again after leaving it for a very short period of time. So that is called a short fallow stage. Then here annual cropping every year we are cultivating a particular land. So there is no situation where the, <coughs> where the land is left unattended. So lapses between the harvesting of one crop in one year and the sowing of the other in the following year. Uh, in fact, it is called annual rotation system in which the time intervening two crops is utilized for sowing the grass. And now as population further increases, we will start multiple cropping or we will use a particular land for the cultivation of different items and more irrigation facilities will use, we will use and capital, more capital technology will be applied because the because what happens is that population has increased to that stage where we cannot allow if, if we cannot allow the land to be left fallow. So immediately we are cultivating and at a time we are cultivating more and more woods. So therefore here, so this, this theory simply says that as population rises, uh, the agriculture uh, develop or the need of food production increases and because of this increase in the need of food production, the society will have to bring more land under cultivation, not only more land will be brought under cultivation, but the existing land will be utilized or will be put for multiple cropping, more intensive type of cultivation. So this theory just explains that it is a population pressure which, uh, which uh, determines the progress of the agriculture sector and 
which determines the growth of the agricultural production. Thank you.